Hey, Ibiza, what's happening? This is Carl Craig back again here at Glitterbox in July. And this is Uncle Carl Speaks. Uncle Carl asks Uncle Carl everything. And right now I have a special guest, one of my, one of my mentors, uh, one of the cats that, that uh, got me started in this business, Mr. Kevin Marie Saunderson, KMS. What's up? What's up, baby? All right. All right. Yeah. So I'm glad to have you here um, with this, doing this, this, uh, this interview, this conversation. Last time was with uh, Dave Lee. And that was, that was quite incredible because I listened to a lot of his remixes. Right. And, you know, he, he had that uh, record that came out on Transmat. Hi. Uh, it was, I uh, forgot what the name was of it. Uh, 1666. Yeah. It was a track that came out on Transmat. Yeah. So we had we had a bit of a memory lane thing, and we talked about remixes and philosophies and all that kind of stuff. Right. So that was real cool. And uh, you know, I mean, I see you. And we have a chat, <laughs> a chat group where you, me, and Kenny and Stacy. So we're always talking. Always. Kevin. Always. Kevin uh, always makes fun of me because we were here playing basketball, and I got on the court drunk and broke my foot, and Kevin was like, "Man." Every time he sees me, he's like, yeah, we got to play some basketball. Especially when we're here on the island, because this is where <laughs> it happened. This is where it happened, yeah. Right. I, slipped on, uh, I slipped on sand, broke my foot. It was stupid, but it was funny. Well, he's retired for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, retired. Have you ever, because you're a sports guy, have you ever had any, any situation like that where you were, uh, not that you were playing drunk or something, right. where you had like a, a real strange injury but you still had to keep touring you still had to be on the road i had a separated shoulder uh -huh. and i was djing in chicago but i didn't know it was settled there uh, i just know my shoulder felt like it was lower and it was just in pain yeah and i'd come to find out it was separated because i was lifting and i, I lift too much weight yeah and what happened was i was djing and felt like my shoulder would just drop down oh and it was in pain and but i played through it but i don't know i had a separated shoulder at the time yeah. So that's my, kind of like similar. Okay. Yeah. And this is where you were playing vinyl? Yes. Yeah. Right. So you were carrying vinyl with right. a I might have, shoulder. Yeah, but I might have had someone tearing the vinyl for me. But still, I had to play and try to play, you know, the best I could with two hands. What's these? And and this was after you were like Master Reese? So oh, you see, yeah, yeah. This was this was years later. It was, I mean, it was before 2000 and somewhere between 96 and 2000. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, because Kev, um, when I met you, then I, I might have met you through Sherrard as well as when I met Derek. Right. Through Luann. But, um, you know, we used to have these conversations me and Sherrard at, at, at Byright, Byright Records is a Detroit store, about, you know, whose music was hotter, yours or Derek's or Juan's. Like, you, you have to have, like, crazy stories of people always pit pitting you guys against each other you know what's are, do you have do you have any crazy things anybody said about uh about your music compared to Derek's or Juan's or or anyone else's people sometimes would say I wasn't really techno because I did vocal music as well as right the underground stuff and that was the only thing really I think that how people compare but you know, we all did hot music as far as I'm concerned. It was just, we had different paths of yeah. how we approached music. I grew up and I was born in New York. So I had a little different uh, aspiration back there. I used to be at the Paradise Garage, yeah. go back there every summer because my father lived there. So I always loved vocals as well as hearing stuff, even like uh, Supernature, Surround. Right. Which it had vocals, but it was out there. It was a very experimental track. Yeah. for that time so but you know we all did hot music at that time yeah you guys all did did hot music that was extremely influential for me but for a lot of other people right and uh up in the green room armin van helden was up there right and he's saying like yeah um good life you can't beat it you know he's uh you know i'm a vocal guy and you know vocals are my things but you cannot beat 
Right. Good life. Good life is like the pinnacle of house records. Right. And it's it's quite it's quite incredible to, you know, just have an off the cuff conversation right. with Armand Van Helden. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's saying this. So yeah. So this I mean, this this is this is it's incredible. You know, you've had thirty years of this. Oh yeah. And, you know, you've been been able to uh benefit greatly from your early music and it just never ages you know what's the skill to that what's the skill to making music that doesn't age yeah i think i, I just i just i got a good ear i think at the time when music was being recreated with technology my inspiration was all about people dancing okay. very important that I wanted people to dance, but not just dance. They had the records I made, even the underground records that I used vocals in. They had to have hooks. They had to have something that people could remember, could attach themselves to. Good Life had a vocal look. It had a lyrical look. It had a melody look. It had a musical look. It had a bunch of hooks mm -hmm. that, that worked together, didn't fight each other and worked and that's why, you know, songs like that can last and will continue on. Incredible. We can we can keep on for like another three hours on this, but I know that you gotta get up there and rock the house. Yeah, so Sam, we gotta do something. We got a few questions that uh I don't know where these questions come from, but there's some questions that uh uh that I wanna ask you. Yeah. So how does it feel to tour and perform with your son? Um, it's good because he is a part of Inner City. He creates new music that we tour to as well as the classics. So it's kind of a, a crossbreed. But it's good because, I, you know, I always seen him as being this athletic person, which he was when he was younger. And he didn't get into music because of me. He got into music because of friends. And they were saying, like, your, your dad is Kevin Saunders. He did this, he did this. I'm like, son, you know, he take it for granted because he's always around me. And I never pushed him or any of my kids into music. So um, to see him be inspired about similar ways that I was inspired just because he loves the music. Right. And the connection there. And then I started realizing he sounded like me. Okay. So torn, it, it, you know, just torn together, it, it's it's fine. You know, we're he's my son. He's he's a, like a friend too, and he's company. So you know, we do a lot, and I can educate him on a lot of stuff, and he educates me on some of the newer stuff. So, right. Sure. So it's a it's a good good connection there, and uh, you know, I'm just I'm thankful that this opportunity has come about because I never imagine right that this would ever happen it never even it never crossed my mind yeah. that this would happen and what you guys are doing is unique too because sometimes it's the the saunderson brothers with dad yeah and yep. that's like every dad's dream that yeah. you know yeah uh sometimes it could be every mother's nightmare <laughs> <laughs> so where's the strangest place you ever dj Strangest place I ever DJ was probably Sarajevo. Okay. You know, it was through war and all that. Okay. And uh, it was strange because I didn't really have a vision of where I was going. Yeah. And when I got there, it was, um, it still looked like a war zone, okay. basically, that I was playing it. Yeah. So it was very strange. Um, Technically, back then, you know, they would pay you 50% up front and 50% when you get there. They couldn't pay no money. Right. And I didn't even worry about it, um, to be honest. Uh, so, but it was, it was it was a bit different to play there. Uh, you know, you want to play uplift people, but it felt like it was a hard challenge just because of all that was around them. But, you know, I got in, did my thing the best I could. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen at a party? Hmm. Weirdest thing I've ever seen at a party. Um, what's a good one? Um, 
I, you know, I mean, the weirdest thing I ever seen at a party, which back then may have been a little weird to me, uh, was men dressed up like women, like drag queens, because that was my first time going to the Paradise Garage. Okay. And to me, that was weird at the time, you know. But at the same time, I was inspired by this music from Larry Levan. And I, at the same time, these men that were like women, yeah, they could dance their ass. Oh, yeah. And I was mesmerized, to be honest, seeing these men dance to the music and the love and the passion. So it was weird for me because new experience in the club. And it was, I wasn't DJing it. Yeah, that was like before. Oh, it was your, this, was, this is before DJ. Okay. Okay. Huh. Yeah, the weirdest thing that I've seen was uh, a couple of guys come out in the leader housing from Panorama Bar with the to, be, to get to an ambulance. So, you know, there must have been some shenanigans going on there. Oh, wow. Uh, if you had a signature fragrance, what would it be called? <laughs> that one was a funny question. Uh, if I had a signature fragrance. Yeah, I would, I would, hey, I would call it KMS. Okay. KMS. All right. Simple as that. And what would it smell like? It would smell sexy. Uh -huh. It would be a powerful at the same time, a, a combination. Uh, right. That's, that's it. Well, it looks like you got five minutes to get on. Hey. hey. So, uh, thanks, Kevin. All right. Brother Kevin Saunderson, right Man. here. KMS Mastery Saunderson. Thank you very much, Ibiza. Thank you, Kevin. Right. Thank you, Glitterbox. This Thank is uh, Uncle Carl Ass. My name is Carl Craig, and that's A S K, not A S S. So, see you next time.